The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Gober the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Holly Christine. Hello, hello. Who, I think I forgot to introduce you and Gonzo Link on the last Constructive Deconstruction, now that I think about it. <laughs> you might have. I, I honestly don't remember. Yeah. But it's like, ah! And that was actually one of the things, I, I put like one of the more recent shows on Reddit a few weeks ago, and the one thing the guy had, had pointed out to me is like, you need to introduce yourself and your guests and everything, and I'm like, um, I, I, that particular episode I kind of did. <laughs> and then of course I say that, and now the previous Constructive de Deconstruction, I forget to introduce people. That, 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 that's how I go, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so how, how has your week been, Holly? Uh, it's been a week. <laughs> oh, Lord. Been in a lot of pain this week, so. Oh, it, no. It's kind of sucked in that regard. Yeah. Pain always um, sucks. But, I mean, work has been interesting. Um, so, I, uh, review answers for, um, a, a big question. No, it's not Yahoo Answers, but <laughs> it, it's, it's a website that's like that. I'm not going to give out the name of the business that I work for, so. Uh -huh. Sorry for all of you who really desperately wanted to know. <laughs> but I review the answers so they don't end up going online and looking like Yahoo Answers, <laughs> ah. essentially. So they actually look like professional and and give you correct information. Well, there you go. And uh, one of the questions that I got in my queue was, how do I stop being a loser? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? This, this feels like Yahoo Answers all of a sudden. Oh, dear. The, the answer was actually really well written. They were like, you know, being a loser is subjective, and there's no real way to stop or start being a loser. But if you'd like to feel better about yourself, here are some ways you can do that. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious. Are you, are you able to say, like, how many of those ways are, like, actual good ways and don't, and don't like, have to tear down other people in order to make you feel better about yourself? All of them. All of them. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you that the company I work for is not like Yahoo Answers. This isn't, I mean, they're all professional writers who are writing the responses to the questions. Okay. So. so so, you just, you basically, you're an editor, basically. Um, Sort of. Technically, I'm a reviewer because I don't actually make the changes. Ah. Um. So in a way, I'm editing because I'm catching the mistakes and sending them back. But right. then the actual editor goes through and makes the changes. And then if it really needs help, then it goes back to the writer and they have to redo the whole thing. Well, there you go. That sounds good. So so wait, on a fringe level, you're technically a reviewer now. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's my actual title. Yeah. And, and you know, because I say that because I know there's going to be some smart-ass listening to this. Be like, oh, hey, Holly's a reviewer now. Ho, 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 ho. He's like, yeah. Technically. <laughs> yep. Wouldn't I review wrong. things like your teacher reviews things. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, my <laughs> For God. For accuracy and, and, and spelling. That's that's what it's like. It's like I'm grading the answers. Do you even have a red pen? Please tell me you got a red pen. Well, no. I mean, it's all online, so. A virtual red pen, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there is no writing in red. Ah, damn. Uh, well, that would that would that would make it awesome, I think. <laughs> oh. Oh, but yeah. Speaking of work and everything, I'm still looking for a day job. But I think I might be onto something. Uh, you know, the past few weeks I've been working on getting my CDLs back up to date and everything, and they are now. Yay! So, Yay! So I've been applying to trucking companies. Some of them they haven't been able to help me because you know my my uh, accident record goes yeah. you know too far over their incident record. I found one that I might be able to because they I have one speeding ticket, three uh, uh, accidents. And and bear in mind when I say accidents, it's not like a turnover on the interstate or anything. Yeah, it's it's like something small, like like I take a sharp, I take a turn too sharp and damage the the uh, rim of a trailer or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Um, so I have three of those, and one company I was looking at is like, yeah, combine between that and your ticket, and we can't we can't take you. But you know, maybe after November or whatever, if you still don't have anything, so there's hope with that one. 
But one of the ones I looked at this week was like four accidents within like three years and then like th- no more than uh, three tickets within three years. So I think mm-hmm. I might be good with that one. I hope. Crossing my fingers. And if that does happen, obviously there's going to be schedule changes and, and, and of course shows are probably going to be delayed for a couple of weeks. But, you know, sometimes it might it might be a good thing. And plus, it would be more money to actually improve things. Um Especially audio-wise, I need to look at getting, like, an actual separate mic, not just using this headset mic that I've been using. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, just just a little bit there. Ah, but, hey, you know. And, and, and of course, of course, being on the road a lot, that means I could get to Chicago more often. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Which would be great. Uh, but, yeah, I also, I did find somebody just this morning, actually. If you've seen, like, I call it the douchebag baby boober meme. Whereas, like, like one of them, one of them was like, you know, I, I worked all summer and paid my college with summer jobs or whatever. You know, tuition was four hundred dollars. Those, mm-hmm. those kinds of memes. Well, a whole bunch of those were on a Tumblr post today, and somebody responded to one of them and said, uh, said I applied at a craft store, and one of the questions was, rate your faith in humanity on a one to five scale. <laughs> wow. <laughs> was this craft store Hobby Lobby? Might be. Who knows? They didn't say. They didn't say. I, I wish they could have said, but uh, uh, but that, but that's just one of those weird things that retail stores, fast food restaurants, they all have them now. It's like they have these little personality tests. It's like, why? I mean, isn't that what an interview is for? To kind of gauge, you know, face-to-face personality with somebody and get to know them a little bit better? It, it, you know, so it's like, so what, what if you're a nihilist but you're good with people? I don't know, but eh. I, I personally just don't like the whole, you know, personality test thing that they have with all of these, inter, you know, interviews. Anyways, that's a good thing about trucking companies. They don't have that bullshit. They just say, okay, you know, you have these accidents. Okay, are you a good driver? Yeah, I'm a decent driver. All right, we'll bring you in. We'll test you. We'll make sure your feet are wet again if it's been a while for you, and then we'll put you on the road. And that, and that's the way it goes. That, that's all they really care about. They don't care if you're good with people or not good with people, unless they come, unless it comes into training, and then they put a trainer on you that would best suit your needs. But beyond that, they don't give a shit. It's like, okay, get there, get there safely, and get it done. All right, mm-hmm. you know, be punctual. That's that's the biggest thing there. Oh lordy. So uh, that that brings us to our shout outs for this week. And uh, Holly, I'm gonna let you go first because I still kind of have to dig up mine. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I have two. Um, one of them is, yeah, you guys are going to hear this more and more now. Um, my boyfriend's show, Yellow Jacket Guy. Um, he just did his review of um, Super Smash Brothers um, Wii U version. So that's out. Um Sweet. And that's on YouTube, and there'll be the link. But you can also go and see it on his website, yellowjacketguy.com. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then there's another one, which I... Oh, my God, it was it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen lately. <laughs> um, the, that Thatbadadvicetumblr.com. Oh, God, I think I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, because I, I, I posted a link for one of the, the bad advice things on, yeah. on Facebook. Um God. It's beautiful. It's like, so the the letter that, um, I, I, and my shout out is for this the whole blog, but I, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this letter. Um, somebody was like, my friend has fibromyalgia and she won't listen to any of the alternative treatments that I find her um, and, and all of the cures. And, and she just gets really annoyed with me. And I think she should just listen to me. And, I mean, yeah, she has a doctor that she sees, and then she takes medication, but she just totally brushes me off, and I feel really unappreciated. And I'm starting to wonder if she even wants to get better. Now, anybody with a chronic illness knows these people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) These people exist everywhere, and they're always giving you some really just, like, basic advice that, like, of course your doctor has already talked to you about, or, or, like, some weird homeopathic thing that they think will work. It's like all of the people who are like, eat raw food and, uh, you know, gluten-free and um, and all of that stuff. And so the response was basically like, oh, man, your friend really put you in a terrible situation. You know, 
she lives with a chronic, you know, painful medical condition, and uh, here she is making you feel sad and unappreciated. Like, wh- where's the justice there? <laughs> you know, the fact is that her illness is all about you. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Because that's, that's how people are. Everything has yeah. to be about them. It may seem like your friend's medical condition is solely her business, and that the management thereof is something she alone is entitled to, but that completely erases you, a person who read a thing about gluten one time from the equation. <laughs> and, and that isn't fair. Indeed, it's even less fair than having fibromyalgia, which your friend could easily not have if she just read those 45 articles you just forwarded her from WebMD. I mean, wow. like, it just goes on and on and on about, like... I think I've seen that one. I, th- I think I did take a look at it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. There was, like... Oh, there was, like, one other one. I th- want to say it was, like... Uh, it was an opinion piece on Al.com, uh, you know, the Alabama news site or whatever. And it was... He was talking about biblical marriage in the 21st century. And I looked at it last night. I'm like, okay. At, at first, I'm thinking, okay, this is this is going to be horrible. But the more he got into it... The more you realized he was basically calling all of these anti-gay marriage folks in Alabama to task, be like, "Yeah, you want to keep by, you want to keep marriage to the biblical definition." Well, here's all these other definitions here, you know, like adultery. A woman commits adultery, you have to stone her at the city gates. To which I immediately thought, "Well, that's kind of hard to do. We don't have city gates anymore." So does that mean she? Yeah. Does that mean she goes free? These are the questions that that people need to ask. Oh. But that that's what uh, the uh, bad advice Tumblr reminded me of is just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so all of the all of the letters are like, help my neighbors have different ideas about how parenting works. <laughs> help our daughter believe she has a right to define the terms of her own lived experience. Mm. Help my sister's family doesn't adhere to my definition of what a family is. Oh Lori. Oh God, that and that made me think of another thing around Tumblr. Have you heard of the Tumblr blog? Um, your your fave is problematic. No. Oh Lordy. Well, they find like usually it's around fictional characters uh, that 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 people have favored it over the years. Well, there was one about Lacey Green, for su- surprising to me, and they they pulled out all of the stuff she said like two or three years ago for the most part. And saying, see, she's this, or, or she's transphobic, or, or she's homophobic. And it's like, guys, for one, no. <laughs> and for two, back then in 2012, I barely had a grasp on, on, on like, on, on transsexuality and, and mm-hmm. gender fluidity at, uh, on my own, you know. And I'm just some schmuck with a headset mic. <laughs> so, you know. And, and of course, Lacey, you know, she's, she's human. She makes her mistakes, but she, from what I'm seeing, she owns up to them. But mm-hmm. of course, you make a mistake on Tumblr; it never dies, and they, they they like to brand you and label you as problematic, pretty much for the end of till the end of time, if they want to. Yeah. And one of them that was brought up that was that that really kind of irked me was she had made a tweet again. I think this was back in 2000, 2012 or so, and she said that her womanhood keep keyword there her you know saying that yeah. it's hers her womanhood you know she defined it with her period. And people went ape shit. They said, "No, no, it, it's it's not definition of womanhood. That's not just period." It's like, guys, I, I get what you're saying, but she's defining her womanhood that way, not yours. Yeah, that's her womanhood. I, oh God, you know, you know, Tumblr can be full of of interesting things, really great things, wonderful magical things, especially as long as Becky is posting her fan art up there, but. There, you guys, sometimes, you just make me want to run my head through a wall and, and hope it comes out into a beehive. <laughs> because that, that would probably feel a lot better than, than some of this bullshit. But what else would make us feel better, you know, about all this bullshit is actually my shout-out. Like I said, I had to pull it up real quick. Um, something that Becky has been showing me every time we do, like, our little uh, Google Hangout dates or whatever. The Pet Collective on YouTube. And it's nothing but, like, little one- to two-minute videos of kittens and puppies just doing all sorts of cute things. Naturally, I'm looking at all the cute kitties, and that's the ones she brings to me because, oh, my God, kitty, squee. 
<laughs> but uh, but again, it's the Pet Collective on YouTube. It's exactly just as it sounds out, spells out, and, and types out, and everything. Uh, if you want to check all that out, you get all of the cuteness. <laughs> it, it is great. Oh, uh, uh, but um, but yeah, I, I were you? I'm, I'm sorry. Were you like about done with your shout out or before I? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I was done. Okay, because. <laughs> I'm getting to the point to where it's like, okay, am I am I just railroading people with my motor mouth, or or are people actually okay? No, I I, I just been talking about the the content of the answer because I was waiting for you to pull the, the thing up. So oh, we're good. Oh. We're good. <laughs> ah yes. So with all of that said, I uh, don't have any inbox mail for this time, unfortunately. But you know what? There's always next time. Again, that link is down there below if you want to send in stuff you want us to talk about on the show or, or, or questions you want answered on the show. It's on uh, it's on the actual Thespian Talk Tumblr, thespiantalk.tumblr.com slash ask. So, I'm, I'm laughing because somebody inboxed me on Tumblr this week um, because I blocked them on Twitter. And I think you might have actually been a part of this conversation. I, I don't actually remember now. Um, but it, it, it was just a... I think you might have seen it now that I say that, but I don't know that you were actually a part of it. But um, Noah had chimed in to, to me and Andrew and, and Mike Dodd and been like, don't let me be the same person here. <laughs> <laughs> or something basically like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember what happened. Right. Um, but it, it, he ended up making a your mom joke. <laughs> and then, like, and that's that's fine. Um, it was something about my mom getting some, oh, and yeah. I don't I don't know if I responded or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it, it, it's Noah, so I didn't really think twice about it. But then somebody else said something about my mom, and I was like, "That's not cool. I don't know you. I'm not friends with you." That's really really inappropriate, and I can't I. I I should have screen capped it. I don't remember what it was now, but I ended up blocking this person because of it. Cause it was like, no, that's, that's like too far. And the thing about it was the tweet had said something like, is that too far? Um, if you're asking that question, a- almost inevitably the answer is going to be yes. Yeah. It just, you know, I mean, it's good to know your boundaries, but don't go too far before you ask, Oh wait, is that too far? Right. Well, if you find yourself asking, is that too far? You already know that the answer is yes, that that's too far. Yeah. And that you're just trying to save yourself from making a bad joke. Yeah. But yeah. I was having none of that, and I blocked them. And so then they they went through, and they deleted a whole slew of tweets, including that one. And then they're like, but why did you unfollow me? And I haven't responded to them yet. So if you happen to be listening to this podcast, uh, I saw your tweet about my mom. And yes, that's why I blocked you. And no, I don't care it was a joke, because it was inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, certain, different levels for different people. Right. You know? Oh, oh, lordy, which, oh god, our news, we're already having to take a shot. Because we're in Florida. Because, of course. Because, god damn it, Florida, we cannot quit you. Mm. None of us can quit you. We can't quit you here. Nash can't quit you. I'm surprised Josh Hadley has hasn't had a focus on Florida a lot, uh, but we can't quit you. We just can't. The Florida Supreme Court will hear arguments on Wednesday on the definition of sexual intercourse in a test of a law requiring HIV people, HIV positive people rather, to tell partners of their status. The case arose in Key West, where Gary Debon was charged in 2011 with falsely telling a man he did not have the virus before they engaged in sex acts. Monroe County Search. Could, Circuit Judge Wayne Miller dismissed the case, saying the law defines sexual intercourse as between men and women. Really? I would like to see this. The state appealed, arguing that the 1986 law DeBon violated, which requires HIV-infected people to inform their partners, was intended to cover all sex acts, both homosexual and heterosexual, even if it did not precisely define the nature of sexual intercourse. Good on the state. Uh, in large part, that was because law was written in gender-neutral language, the state argued. District Appeals Court overturned Miller's ruling and asked the Supreme Court to intervene. 
The Florida legislature and this court have always identified penile vaginal union as sexual intercourse and distinguished it from all other sexual contact, Ass Assistant Public Defender Brian Lee Ellison, representing the bond, said in his brief to the high court. The plain meaning of the term is therefore clear and unambiguous, he added, stating that, according to Florida law, sexual intercourse does not refer to homosexual acts or oral sex. So wait a minute. So if, if I were to eat somebody out, that would not count as intercourse for you, to you guys? Well, okay, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, the guy is right, the law is wrong, in my opinion. Okay. Now, the guy is still a fucking douchebag, and I still think that they need to find a way for this guy to go to jail. Right. However, um, sex and sexual intercourse are not the same thing. So I think the law needs to be opened up in that respect. Right. That it needs to just be sexual acts and not specifically intercourse. Yeah. So... Because I'm pretty sure if you looked up the definition of intercourse... It's going to give you a definition between a, a man and a woman. Yeah. Which, again, that also opens up another can of worms because I would ass that would assume penetration. I, that, would, that would be my assumption. Right, and I feel like that's why you need to open that up because, because too there many... are plenty of things that... Uh, so, it, as far as I'm concerned, if you, if you use the word sex to describe it in any sort of way... It counts as sex. There you go. So oral sex is sex because you just said the word sex. There you go. <laughs> Anal sex is sex. Gay sex is sex. Yes. <laughs> sex is sex. And, 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 you know, so basically it, it, a, a rewording of the law should be should be opened up and, and, and completed at this point from what I'm gathering from what you're saying. Right. Right. Now, the, dictionaries are, are slowly trying to... Um, make the def definition more inclusive, uh -huh. that it's just supposed to be sexual activity between two people. Uh -huh. um, but full definitions keep coming back to uh, vaginal and, and penal intercourse, specifically. Yeah, yeah which... which wait. So rather than waiting for the linguistic world to catch up, let's just change the law. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah linguistics, they take, they take a while. Because everybody's got to agree on it, and you're getting seven. How many? How many billions of people are on this planet now? You know. Right. Well, and you know, it's, there's some. So when I worked um, writing websites, th there were specific dictionaries that we had to refer back to as the basis for definitions of things because they wanted to make sure that we were all using the same kind of wording. Right. Um. And. That's because lots of dictionaries still don't have the same definitions for words. And that's why I'm like, don't wait, because what that's going to do is somebody's going to say, well, but this dictionary says that intercourse is this. So I don't, you know, I didn't break the law. Yeah. Which is where a point where I say, okay, legally fuck the dictionary. <laughs> right. Legally fuck the dictionary. That's why I'm like, fix the law. Yes, can we do that? Can we do that? Hey, you know what? I'm like 80 miles from Tallahassee. I could go over there, you know, you know, look look at the governor. Oh, God, what the fuck is his name? Uh, all I know is the governor fucktard because of the whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, Medicaid not being an extended thing here. You know, so he's Senator Fucktard to me. Or mm. is it governor? Either way, he's a fucktard. You know, go and ask Governor Fucktard, hey, hey, um, how about we reword this? But then, of course, Governor Fucktard, he's a Republican and he's and he's conservative enough to probably be like, no, fuck you, I, I like that definition because I don't recognize any others because it's squeaky. Uh, it's probably how he thinks. Probably. But uh, yeah, thankfully, the spirit of the law is still a thing. Yeah. And, it, you know, I really hope that they find this guy guilty because they're going to be like, listen, yeah, he he doesn't have a vagina, but there somebody stuck something somewhere, mm -hmm. and you put somebody at risk. Yeah, I mean the only the only way he could get away with that is if he didn't know. But from the sounds of the article, he kind of knew. Yeah, no, it sounds like he knew, and he was yeah. just like, "No, I'm safe." Yeah, bullshit. Uh, uh speaking of safety, we're gonna go to the other state. That that is just as crazy. The state that is crazy enough to where even even 
Congress people from Florida. Congress people from Florida are now calling, you know, the the the, the Congress people in Texas crazy shits and all that got all that stuff. I don't remember the exact words, but it, it, when you got Florida calling you out on your ass, you got problems, Texas. And this is the one of them. And and you may have heard of it by now. Tolkien lore led a Texas boy to suspension after he brought his quote unquote one ring to school. That is yep. not a sexual thing either, <laughs> thankfully. Kermit Elementary School officials called it a threat when the nine-year-old boy, Aiden Stewart, in an act of playful make-believe, told a classmate he could make him disappear with a ring forged in fictional Middle Earth's Mount Doom. It sounded unbelievable, the boy's father, Jason Stewart, told the Daily News. He insists his son didn't mean anything by it. The Stewarts had just watched The Hobbit, The Battle of Five Armies, days earlier, inspiring Aiden's imagination and leading him to proclaim that he had in his possession the one ring to rule them all. Kids act out movies that they see. When I watched Superman as a kid, I went outside and tried to fly, Stewart said. I hope you didn't try to jump off the top of a house. Uh, uh. Aiden claimed Thursday that he could put a ring on his friend's head. On his head? Wow. And make him invisible like Bilbo Baggins, who stole Gollum's process in J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy series, The Lord of the Rings. I assure you, my son lacks the magical powers necessary to threaten his friend's existence, the boy's father later wrote in an email. If he did, I'm sure he'd bring him right back. Now, I, when I read this story initially, I was like, God, that sounds like my parents. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, hmm? just that there have been times when specifically my older sister got sent home with a note for taking the Lord's name in vain. Um, when she was getting picked on at school, um, <laughs> and my mom wanted to write back, like, who gives a damn, <laughs> or something, or, or, in, in response to the note, like, you know, here's, a, here's our little girl standing up for herself, and, and this is the problem that you have, that she said, give me my goddamn ball back. Yeah. So so wait, were the bullies ever dealt with, or or, or I don't was think it just so. your sister? Ah, oh, I, I I went to punch somebody now. Just yeah. Ah, oh, god damn it. Oh, look at that. So of course my sister didn't get in trouble. My yeah. parents are like, whatever, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, Principal uh, Roxanne Dreer declined to comment on the fourth grader's suspension, citing confidentiality policies, according to the Odyssey American, who first reported Aiden's troubles Friday. The family moved to the Kermit Independent School District only six months ago, but it's been nothing but headaches for Aiden. He's already been suspended three times this school year. Two of the disciplinary actions this year were in-school suspensions for referring to a classmate as black, but it, it, uh, and bringing his favorite book to school, The Big Book of Knowledge. He loves that book. They were studying the solar system, and he took it to school. He thought his teacher would be impressed, Stewart said. But the teacher learned the popular children's encyclopedia had a section on pregnancy depicting a pregnant woman in an illustration, he explained. Texas, everybody. Apparently, and now I'm actually surprised that he got in trouble for referring to a, a what was it, a classmate as black. I mean... Somebody is... did point out, nobody said the classmate was actually black. Yeah. It's just, oh, he's black. Although, I, I assume that this is supposed... Like, I, part of me wants to be like, maybe they mean that he used a racial slur. And then I'm like, no, but they specifically, they say that he referred to them as black. And then that just makes me angry, because I'm like, not all black people are African American. Exactly. In fact, I'm willing to bet a lot of the, the, the black people that are born nowadays, they're, they're just American. When I think African American, I think somebody who immigrated here from Africa, and that's yeah, my my cousin's husband. Yeah, African. See? There you from go. From Africa. You know, that's African American. You know, but it, but if like like if you're born here, then you're technically American, I would think. Uh, that that that's my thinking on it. I I could be off. Well, a lot of uh, um, so Raven Simone. Uh -huh. um, the little girl from the Cosby show, and she had her own Disney Channel show for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, drew a lot of fire for for insisting, I'm not African-American, I'm black. Yeah. And, and she's like, I, I don't know where my family came from. There you go. Uh, like, yeah, uh, did they come from somewhere in Africa? 
Probably, but I don't know it. I'm just an American. I'm just a black American. Yeah, and honestly, and, and yes, I know, I know I'm know, i white. I'm about as white as my shirt right now. And I'm saying, you know what, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you don't see white people saying, yeah, we're European American or we're German American or French American, usually. You know, unless, unless they came directly from those countries. Yeah. You know, like, like, like say if Benzai immigrated over here from France, he would be French American, for example. But if he immigrated over here and then like two or three generations down the line, you know, they've been in the Americas for a while, they would be Amer they that they could say, Yeah, we're American, but we have like French heritage, I guess mm -hmm. that would be. I, I guess I guess I'm thinking that. And then the other one that kinda just kinda irked me was the, the the book of knowledge, the big book of knowledge, getting in trouble because oh my god, it depicted a pregnant woman. Like Well, I, I assume it was like an anatomical picture, so like, she was nude, but I'm certain also that it was also, like, a cutaway of the body. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why why are you upset about that? It's like, it, it, how much more clinical can you get with a woman's body than that? I mean, does, does the teacher have such an issue? Did the teacher look at that and, and suddenly get, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume male here, you know, did he look at the thing and, and suddenly have a, an awkward boner with a clinical view of a woman's body? I mean, it's one thing in your it's one thing if like you're a little kid because I know uh, my parents we had like some of those health books that you got to think from Reader's Digest or whatever, mm -hmm. and there was one on women's health uh, which I looked at a lot because well for one it interested me too. There was like actual depictions of like that you know woman's vagina and everything, and my young kid mind at the time you know that was kind of like oh hey cool. What is this in my pants? <laughs> you know, but that's the little kid. This is a full grown ass adult. You should. Well, I mean, the same kid. Like, I don't even question this anymore because the same kid got in trouble for bringing the one ring to school. Really? Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh no, never mind. We can't have kids having imagination. Oh my god. <laughs> right. It's like, well, how could you possibly get in tr trouble for that? Like. He got in trouble for telling a kid that he could make him invisible. Yeah, or or, or even make him disappear, which would kind of be the same thing at this point, because you disappear, you're invisible. You know, I mean, oh well, okay, disappear can be construed to mean different things, but if you if you listen to the context, ask the kid. Okay, what do you mean by that? You know, they talk about the One Ring, and then okay, cool, okay. Fine. Well, I just think about how many kids ever should get suspended from school if having an imagination is. Or just being a dick to your friends is a reason to get suspended from school. Yeah. I mean, I, I convinced this is, like, so ridiculous. But when I was seven or eight, I can, you know how in the front of textbooks, they there's that thing that you, like, where you put your name and then you mark the condition of the book? Yeah. Like, when you got it and what the school year was? I convinced a friend of mine in, like, the first or second grade that I could tell the future using that thing. I think I told him he was going to be a famous soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because we were super into soccer at that period of time in our lives. But, yeah, it's like, you know, oh, oh, oh God. Like, what if I had told him something horrible was going to happen to him? Like, I, I could have gotten suspended from school. Like, but no, what teacher would do that? What teacher was like, oh, well, you know, this kid is just pretending. Uh, but, you know, that's bad, so you're suspended. Yeah. If if anything, if you're really that worried about what the kid is doing, just talk to them for a minute and, and make sure they understand, yeah, this is all pretend, right? You don't really and, – and make sure they understand that pretend is fine, but, but you know, be careful, you know, because then you're going to have some overzealous, overprotective – you know, ass wank over here that'll suspend you for just acting like you're Bilbo Baggins. You know, just and and just I. Oh, oh, speaking speaking of overreacting and, and and well, I don't know how well this goes into overreacting territory, but we're going there anyway because we're going to Kentucky. Oh, the creationist ministry answers in Genesis announced Tuesday that they that would that that typed out that would, but I think they missed a thing, that they would file a lawsuit in the st against the state of Kentucky over tax rebate benefits for its Noah's, Noah's Ark-based theme park. 
In a YouTube video, Answers in Genesis President Ken Ham accused Kentucky of religious discrimination. Lawyer Mike Johnson, who also appeared in the video, agreed. Religious groups, ideas, and organizations can't be treated with hostility by the government, and in effect, that's what we have here, he said. In December, Kentucky, in December rather, Kentucky withdrew tax rebates for the Ark and Counter Park in Williamston, Kentucky, that were potentially worth more than $18 million. Kentucky Tourism, Arts and Heritage Cabinet Secretary Bob Stewart said the project had transformed from a tourist attraction to an extension of AIG's ministry. Answers in Genesis had refused, refused a pledge to not discriminate against non-Christians in hiring. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Stewart explained in his letter that it was a violation of the Constitution for, for the Commonwealth's incentives to be used to advance religion. Yeah. Aha! See? <laughs> Answers in Genesis accused the state officials of bowing to pressure from secularist, secularist organizations, you know, like the government, and Ham said his ministry had no choice but to file a lawsuit. No, you could choose not to, and, and choose to be a big boy and pull up your pants and realize that the state's not going to pay for you to spread your religion. You got to do that on your own dime. Our organization spent many months attempt. I'm not even going to try and do his accent at this point. Mm -hmm. To reason with state officials so that this lawsuit would not be necessary, Ham said. However, the state was so insistent on treating our religious entity as a second class citizen. <laughs> second class citizen, right, okay. That we, simp we were simply left with no alternative but to proceed to court. This is the latest example of increasing government hostility towards religion in America, and it's certainly among the most blatant. Increasing government hostility? Bullshit. I call bullshit. There is not... Okay. If anything, the government is saying, hey, we need to make this more fair because, holy shit, there's more than, there, there are more than just Christians in this goddamn country right now. Yeah. You know, that's not hostility. That's trying to make the playing field even, which, of course, you don't want because in your playing field, Christianity is about five foot high... It's about five feet higher than every other religion. And then, of course, the atheists are probably down even lower than that, but that's a whole different story. We'll get the even playing field eventually. But people like him, he, he, it's he, Ken Ham, you are a big ball of wah! That's what you are. I mean, I mean, there's this, there's the whole carnival commercial, which we talked about on the last Constructive Deconstruction. It's just, ah, oh, you are a big ball of wah! You really are! Ah! Oh. Any thoughts? Well, I mean, this is just stupid. It's like, okay, your religious group being treated the way the government says religious groups should be treated, which is we're not going to give you tax breaks if if your whole, like, government tax breaks, if you're going to be like, but we're a religious group, so we're not, we're going to be, and that's, that's, okay, getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, for those of you who don't know, it is permissible for religious organizations to hire within their religion and solely within their religion. That is their discretion as religious groups, and it's the only time that this kind of, uh, to my knowledge, it's the only ki time that this kind of um, discrimination discrimination is allowed. Yeah, I mean, it, it you know, because it is. Um, a form of discrimination and they don't so they don't have to um, hire people who don't share their beliefs because they're a religious group mm -hmm. um, but now these people are saying well but we want that and we still want the tax breaks and it's like uh, no but you can't like you can do one or you can do the other but you can't have both because otherwise we are just promoting your religion and they're saying the government's saying no, but we're not going to promote your religion. That, that doesn't make you a second-class citizen. That means you're an organization that made a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if it was like if it was like an actual church or something, then they would just be tax exempt, right? You know, as a religious organization. Right, uh, this but, is, but this is a business. Yeah, it's a business. It's it's supposed to be a tourist attraction, which I admit I kind of want to go see just to make fun of it. But um, I mean, I mean, I don't know how the taxes for all religious things work, but I mean, this yeah. this isn't a church. This isn't them sharing religious knowledge. This is a, a business. This is a, a theme park. Yeah, you're basically charging people to come in and look and look at your crackpot religious theory, basically. Uh, 
So, and if you don't want to follow fair hiring practices, then why should you get tax rebates? Yeah. This this is – in the eyes of the government, this is not a church thing. This is a business thing. In a business thing, you need to follow the government's rules, all of them. You know, even even if you don't like them, even if even if they make you want to pull out your hair and toss it to a rabid wolverine, you have to follow them. You really do. Something that Senator Tom Mills from North Carolina does not seem to get, <clears throat> so because he argued this week that restaurants should be able to opt out of health department regulations that require employees to wash their hands after using the bathroom. On Monday, the freshman senator ended his talk at the Bipartisan Policy Center with a story to illustrate his philosophy on government regulations. I was having this discussion with someone, and we were at a Starbucks in my district, and we were walking, we were talking about certain regulations where I felt like maybe you should allow businesses to opt out, he recalled. Let an industry or business opt out as long as they indicate through proper disclosure, through advertising, through employment literature, or whatever else. There's this level of regulations that maybe they're on the books, but maybe you can make a market-based decision as to whether or not they should apply to you. Tillis said that about at the time a Starbucks employee came out of one of the restrooms. Don't you believe that this regulation that requires this gentleman to wash his hands before he serves you food is important? Tillis was asked by this person at his table. I think it's one I can illustrate the point. Yeah, I think it's one I can illustrate the point, Tillis told the woman. Women, rather. I said, I don't have any problem with Starbucks if they choose to opt out of this policy as long as they post a sign that says we don't require our employees to wash their hands after leaving restrooms. The market will take care of that. Yeah, the market will take care of that because if you go into a restaurant or a Starbucks or wherever that has that kind of sign up, I'm not going to want to have food that's prepared by those hands. Just sorry. Just because, mm -hmm. yeah, they know where their bits have been. I don't. That's why. You... Well, I mean, that's that's sort of the the like as dumb as this person is being. That's sort of their point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. The part about it that makes it super dumb, though, is the fact that um, we don't have a hundred percent literacy in this country. Yeah. So they they. Not everybody's going to be able to read the sign, and they're not going to understand. They're not going to know. Oh, and then they're going to get served food by people whose hands are covered with whatever stuff comes off of their junk. You know, that wasn't washed off, you know? <laughs> I mean, but, like, he went on to say that we have to reduce the regulatory burden on this country. Um, it's not like we have the hand washing police that go around and are like, Did you wash your hands? Did you wash your hands? Did you wash your hands? Like this is this is still largely self policing unless we have a, a health inspector there at the time. Yeah. So it's like getting rid of this law doesn't do us any good either. Yeah. It, it's it's like, dude. He's like, yeah. Of all the things, that, apparently that's the hill he wanted to die on. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really, dude. I mean, hell, even trucking companies, like when you're at their operating centers or whatever, they, they have signs up there telling you, wash your hands after you're done using the restroom before you go back to work. You know, even though, by and large, you drive your own truck, you know, you, you don't, you know, if you're just in there to use the bathroom real quick, you just, you get back out to the truck or whatever. But even then, you can see where they're going because you still have to deal with, or at least with uh, Schneider I did. You still have to deal with the paperwork that you have to feed into the computer to send in so you can get paid. And that, of course, you get that from stacks on, like, like paper they have there or what have you. You still have to use their computers and printers to get get that taken care of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, there's always the doors. So, you know, so they're, they're doing their part to spread that around. And, and for the most part, except for the cafeteria workers, not really, not really much with food service. So all in all, the whole hand-washing thing I think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But – but this guy, and, and, and you know what, like you said, it's definitely a self-policing thing, because especially restaurants, if you don't wash your hands and people start getting sick, they're going to look right at you, and they'll probably give you the boot. So it's like, yeah, we, we're not putting up with that shit. Uh, uh, speaking of not putting up with shit, oh, another Florida shot. Take a double, because this one is within 50 miles of me. Hello. Yes, Bonifay, Florida, and hello, doggy. Uh 
Superintendent Eddie Dixon responded to questions about the school district's attendance policy but was unable to comment much on his recent decision to suspend – rather – I'm sorry. I'm laughing because Pixie is going crazy in the background about something. I have no idea what, but – Well, she's right ahead. Apparently she knows. But the decision to suspend a Bethlehem high school teacher who claims her controversial classroom policies are in place to hold students accountable for tardiness. Well, what are these controversial classroom policies? Susan Steverson, a language arts teacher who's been employed at the school for 27 years, received her second suspension this academic year for alleged insubordinate conduct when, on December 12th, Steverson engaged in a disagreement with Principal Brett Jones over her policy requiring tardy students to be locked out of the room until let in by the teacher. That day, tardy students reported Steverson to administration for locking them out and refusing to accept late work. Okay. On that policy, okay, the lockout policy, where do you stand on that in general? Um, that's, that's really a tough one, I feel like, um, because, you know, you're responsible for getting the class on time, and there shouldn't be any reason that you're not at class on time. However, you know, just because they're tardy doesn't mean that they don't have a pass. Yeah. So it's like, well, why would you just let them stand up there like they may actually be excused um however with (coughs) excuse me with more and more things happening in schools and more and more violence taking place in schools um the idea of locked classrooms doesn't really surprise me and you know i'm not sure that i'm really prepared to say well she should just leave the door unlocked because you know, maybe, yeah, sure, this school district may not necessarily have a problem, but you'd hate to have that first time be somebody barging into your classroom and shooting up your students. Yeah, that, that, that is also true. And I'm kind of kind of on the same mindset with you on that one, um, you know, but I'm, I'm thinking as far as, like, the tardiness goes, you know, before you actually start the class proper, you know, wait, maybe, like, five minutes you know make sure any other stragglers are in because like you said they might have you know they might be excused you know like like the bus broke down because there's a lot of dirt roads around here and sometimes when it rains you know the buses might get stuck or or they may not be able to get out there so the parent might have to bring them in or whatever and and of course the parent may not be able to quickly enough because again you know rain dirt roads really slick so they have to be careful so you know that they they there they ha- there should be some leeway there you know, but that, but after yeah, or I mean, there have been times where I was talking to another teacher and then got to where I was going to later. I mean, I had a pass, but yeah, yeah, there, there has to be some way to work around it. Yeah, you know, but um, but the other one is refusing to accept late work. I don't know if I could agree with that one. I mean, yeah, you 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 know, your work is late, so you don't get full credit, obviously, because you know one of the things they try and teach you is punctuality. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you have work assignments. That's why you have due dates to try and teach you the value of punctuality. You know, so if you don't turn it in on time, even though, even if it's like the perfect paper that that you know it could be put in scientific journals all over the world, you turned it in a day late. It would dock you like five or ten points or whatever. Uh, but of course, also with the American school system and the grading scale that we use, holy shit, that can make too much of a difference. Uh. But, if you're if you're unexcused and you're late, then why why should should the teacher accept your work? That like that's the thing I don't understand. Yeah. It's like, uh, and this <coughs> excuse me, this article goes on to say something about how um, teachers are responsible for the students in their class during a time period, and to that extent, I fully understand that like it's not like if the teacher is aware that there are kids out there yeah no they shouldn't she shouldn't just leave them waiting she needs to let them in right away yeah um and your idea of you know keeping the door open for the first five minutes is a fairly good idea but there's no reason that she should have to accept their late work if you are late to class you are late period your work is late you know, whether or not she accepts it should be solely up to her. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah but, but also, on the other hand, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing where you are, I'm seeing where I am, but this is kind of popping out here. On the other hand, if if they did all the work and, 
in in late in their late anyway. Does that mean that all of their work would essentially, or at least would they start feeling like their work was for nothing because they couldn't even sh- turn it in show to her because they were just not punctual? And it could. Uh, be- well, maybe they should start being on time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. But yeah, that's that's one for holy shit. That's one for another day. <laughs> uh, right. So- I mean, yeah. It- it's always nice if teachers will go ahead and accept that anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think to say that it has to be, it's like, if you're going to do that, then put regulations in place that say that the teachers have to accept it. But to just tell her, oh, well, but you just have to. Yeah. It's like, you know, you gave her the authority over this classroom. If she's not breaking any rules, then I don't understand what the issue is. Yeah. Especially when it's in an effort to keep students accountable. Yeah. So there, there are different ways of handling it. I don't think that there, there may not be just one way of handling it. Is you know, like you said, it could be just you know, teacher's classroom. She's in charge of the students, and each teacher is going to handle things differently. Whether she should have been suspended over things like this, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think I see where, like, like the principal and, and the school board are all coming in and, be like, you know, they're thinking of the students, and that's fine. But, I mean, was it that much of a problem that they would have to do it? Like, what the hell? Although, uh, there's one other thing in here about, about the teacher. Uh, let's see, the personnel file maintained by the school district holds a prior letter of reprimand to Stevenson from the formal former principal Timothy Clemens the letter from May 2007 alleged that Stevenson's, a- Stevenson's, Stevenson's actions around a prank were unprofessional and inappropriate the out- letter outlined a prank in which Stevenson admitted to providing crickets released by students into the classroom of another Bethlehem teacher through a window that had been left unlocked <laughs> um I know this was back in 2007 but what the fuck uh, uh, even around here we're you know, we, we're we're up in Graceville. We're 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 looking down there. We're like, what the fuck? You know, we don't pull shit like that. At least we didn't when I was in high school. I don't know why they put that in there. I guess, I guess just to show more of her character, I suppose, or or maybe. I, yeah, I. I don't know. I don't really get the point of this being important to the story at all. I don't either. But but just the crickets through the window was like, why? Why one? Why the article? Do you have it in there? And two, why crickets through the window? I mean, if you're gonna play a prank, there are much better pranks to play. You know, just just. It well, the thing about it is, like, she didn't sign the letter because, uh, um, she's she had made contradictory statements about her involvement in the prank, and she didn't want to name other people involved. Ah, so, <coughs> so in the end, it's also like she's kind of maybe take trying to take a bullet for them too yeah so so okay you know well, hey you know you know points to her on that one uh, but yes that is that is local florida taint politics for this week <laughs> oh lincoln county which again i think is i i think this is another florida one i think uh, i want to say uh, i'm probably sure i don't know but we'll find out lincoln county a uh, six-year-old boy's mother, grandmother, and aunt are accused of staging a kidnapping, then holding the child for four hours to teach him about stranger danger. Oh, I, I haven't actually read this article yet, but I heard all about it, and I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. And then a friend of mine commented that um, when she was a kid, she and her brother were walking to the corner store, and their uncle um, jumped out and tried to abduct them with a mask on. And, of course, the kids fought back, and he, he took off his mask right away because they're beating the shit out of him. <laughs> well, well, on the one hand, it's like, okay, good, you're fighting back, yay. On the other hand, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, like, why Why would the guy do that? Like, And for that matter, why do his parents do that? Like, don't trust a- strangers, but you clearly can't trust your family either. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. They hatched the plot to scare the boy because they said he was too nice to people, police said. 
God forbid. Uh, the boy's mother, Elizabeth Hupp, grandmother, Rose Brewer, and aunt, Denise Crotley, Crotil, rather, engaged the help of Nathan Firovhead? Who the f- where the fuck are all these names coming from? Who worked with Crotil at a gas station. Firovhead waited for the boy to get off of his bus after school, then lured the child into his pickup, police say. While in the truck, Firovhead, 23, told the boy he would never see his mommy again, and he would be nailed to the wall of a shed. Dude. Wow! Dude, there there is a time where you are too committed to sparkle motion, and I think you've hit it. Oh. As the boy started to cry, well, naturally, Fiberred showed him a handgun and told the child if he didn't stop crying, he would hurt him, authorities said. Fiberred continued driving the boy around in his truck, then because he would not stop crying, Fiberred bound the boy's hands and feet with plastic bags and covered his face with an adult-sized jacket so he couldn't see. Later, Fibera took the boy, still blindfolded, to the boy's home and left him there, authorities said. The boy's aunt, Cr Crotil, removed his pants and told him he could be sold into sex, sex slavery. She also chastised oh. him because he did not try to resist her. He did not recognize her voice. He's six years old and scared out of his mind. What the fuck do you expect? The child was kept confined for an undetermined amount of time before he was untied. Then his family lectured him about staying away from strangers, police said. No! This is not how you do this! This this is this is basically... Uh, you put a child into a situation that has him scared out of his mind. Then you bitch at him because he was too naive and too na or, or too nice to get pulled into that situation in the first place. You're basically you're bitching at the child for being, you know, youthfully gullible. He's six yeah. years old. You know, not every six year old is gonna have a mind like a steel trap. And that's why you don't do this shit. You just don't do it. What the fuck? Now, now, Fiberred Brewer, 58, and Crotal, 38, were charged Thursday with felony kidnapping, felonious restraint, and abuse or neglect of a child. Hup, 25, was charged with felony kidnapping and abuse or neglect of a child. So at least the police have these fuckers in custody. I think that, like, I, I don't care if she wasn't there at the time this was taking place. I think the mother should have been charged for all of these same things that everybody else got charged with. Here she... Like, just because she didn't tie her kid up, she let them tie up her kid. Yeah, it's like, well, let's see. Well, she was charged. Let's see, Hup was, Hup was the mother. Right, but she wasn't charged with felonious restraint. Okay. Just kidnapping and abuse and neglect. Yeah, which, you know, that's pretty heavy on its own, too, so. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not like she's getting a slap on the wrist, thankfully. Oh, just, wow. Oh, dear. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, it's around St. Louis, so according to uh, one of the things around here. Oh, damn. Oh. So this wasn't from my neck of the wood. This is from cats. <laughs> oh, lordy. But, yeah, those, those, those fuckers. Again, like I said, you don't do that! Yeah. Just... And they only found out because he told somebody at, at school about it. Yeah, I mean, I would tell people, too. You know, I mean, like, yeah. So, what did you do? What did you do yesterday afternoon, Timmy? Well, I went home and I poked a frog for a little while. What did you do, Ramy? Well, uh, I got kidnapped and 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 and, and uh, uh, um, tied up and, and and told to not cry and I had my pants pulled down and then I got fussed at by everybody in my family for being naive and being kidnapped. What the fuck? I really hope that he's not stuck living with his family right now. Oh, uh, no, he's, the child was placed into protective custody. Okay, thank yeah. God. Yeah, it was like, yeah, thank you, thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. Oh, but uh, we have we do have one more story. Uh, this one's a good one, and as, far, and as far as I know, I've seen it from more reputable sites, so I, I, I'm hoping that, that this actually turns out to be true and not turns out to and, be true. Yeah, I've seen news about this everywhere. Yeah, I'm hoping this is not just some wild rumor that got out of hand, but just in case it's not, Netflix is bringing Nintendo's flagship fantasy adventure series, The Legend of Zelda, to television with a live-action series. According to the Wall Street Journal, Netflix is describing the series as Game of Thrones for the family audience. So we are going to see Link fucking Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Except without without the tits. 
Nintendo <laughs> luminary Shigeru Miyamoto created The Legend of Zelda as a way of recapturing the exploratory magic of his childhood. Most games in the series retell the mythical tale of a young boy named Link, the Princess Zelda, and the villainous Ganondorf, all locked in a struggle to control the powerful artifact known as the Triforce. The game fits into the same fantasy genre as Game of Thrones, but at vastly different ends of the spectrum. No <laughs> shit. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And even then, Zelda can still have its dark moments, too. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, hey, Majora's Mask is, Mask is coming out for the 3DS soon, so, you know. Mm. Where Game of Thrones is graphically violent and heavy on intrigue and plot, The Legend of Zelda has more in common with a children's fairy tale. To be fair, each game in the series reinterprets the series in a new way, so it'll be interesting to see what Netflix's interpretation ends up looking like. Just don't have them be 80s Link. Just, No. <laughs> Uh, I even though I enjoy the old Zelda cartoons, I know what most people would be like if Link belts out an "Excuse me, princess." Uh. Oh dear, the series is still in its in the earliest stages of development, with Netflix still seeking a writer, so we'll likely be waiting a while before it starts streaming. In the meantime, The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask 3D was just released for the Nintendo 3DS. Um, no, it's not. It's not really well. Maybe in Japan, and a new <laughs> Legend of Zelda game co console game is expected to be released in 2015. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say no, it's not. But then wait, they may have, they already have it in Japan. I I don't know. All I know is the American release. But new Zelda series that would be awesome. That might actually convince me to reactivate my Netflix. Because <laughs> because I kind of stopped it because the only thing I was really using it for was George watching uh, George Carlin specials, mm -hmm. and then they dropped the George Carlin specials. So it's like I, I'm not really using it. Yeah, no, it's not released in Japan yet either. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, wow. So I just looked it up. The release date in Japan is is Valentine's Day. Okay, so it, it actually releases here uh, on the thirteenth. Yeah, and then Val so and then... so uh, it, it must have the same worldwide release time. I'm guessing. Yeah. Because Australia and Japan are on the fourteenth, and North America and Europe are on on the thirteenth. Okay then. So all right. So yeah. So either way, the article I. Uh, don't even remember where I grabbed this from, but, but I'm guessing that they've probably seen like previews of the game and, and assumed that it was released. Yeah, just a little bit. Oops, a um, little bit of fail there, but I wanted to end on a lighter note because that is just freaking awesome. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of mixed opinions about it. Surprisingly, that some excuse me. Man, coughing and now hiccups. This is not my day. The plus <laughs> pixie going off in the background. Yes. Oh my lord. Yeah. Well, she's excited for Zelda too, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, Pixie uh, has um, a back problem where she is not allowed to jump up or down anything ever again. Mm -hmm. Um. So because of it, she ends up having to be crated a lot of the time until we can get her trained to stop jumping. So that's why she's upset right now, because she's a little upset about having to be in her crate. But um, it's because any sharp movement with her spine could paralyze her. Ouch. So, right. It is really for her own good. Um, but anyway... <laughs> Back to the mixed reviews that I've heard about this. Some people are are just sad that um, they're afraid that this is going to ruin uh, Zelda stuff for them. I mean, a, a lot of geeks should be happy because at least it will help end some of the Link versus Zelda confusion. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you know, even though, you know, if you really wanted to and and, and and all that, there's still the old cartoon that technically mm -hmm. did that back in the day, but apparently nobody wants to talk about that. Hey. Uh, and and even the CDI games do that. You know, as much as as much of dis canon discontinuity there is in those games, they, they still call Link Link and Zelda Zelda, you know. Mm -hmm. The boy in the tunic is Link, the other princess is Zelda. It was like, eh, you know, but but of course they're not they're not official because they weren't made by Nintendo or in the case of the cartoon it sucked. Uh. <laughs> right. Well, and people are very afraid it's gonna suck, and they're like, please don't ruin Zelda for me. Yeah. But... Well, let me let me put it like this. You know, the old cartoon 
the CDI games, they, 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 they have dubious qualities about them. Maybe enjoyable, who knows, depending on the controller setup for the games. Or if you just want to go back to your childhood in the case of the cartoon, hello. Um, but you know what? They didn't ruin the franchise. I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can ruin it with a bad TV show. You just can't, because the games are just too much goddamn fun. Oh, so you know the games. You know, just like Super Mario, you had like three different Super Mario Brothers cartoons. The Mario games are still running wild to this day. You know, they've had this live action movie. They they even had like an anime movie back in the 80s after like the first game came out. Which Becky and I got to see a subtitled version of it. And we both spent most of the movie going, what the fuck were they on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but even then, it's enjoyable and it's what the fuckness. So. Mm-hmm. But then again, it's also Mario. They don't have that much of a story structure. You know, It's just, you know, Bowser kidnaps Peach or, or does something evil. Mario goes and kicks his ass. Sometimes yeah. it's Luigi. So, you know, th- th- there's not much in the way of plot there. Oh. But uh, with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. And if we wanted to find Holly on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me all over the place as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y, G-O-X. So Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. Um, my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown. And you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And, and, and let's see, me... I, I, I am stuttering because I am remembering every place that I am. <laughs> uh, but you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff, other shows, podcasts, etc. over on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can also find my own fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, on Facebook. And as I said at the start of the show, this show right here, along with my other podcasts, we all have you know the Tumblr blogs for all of them, which basically for the most part is just a, a Tumblr feed for all of the updates that I can just reblog from or what have you. Um, but again, the Thesmia Talk ask, blo- ask box is open perpetually on <laughs> Tumblr. If you want to check that out, the link will be below. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Uh, am I missing something? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Your, your wonderful award-winning yeah. animator book. girlfriend. Yes, there there is her too. But, but, but see, the reason I haven't been you know outright saying it you know during the show is because she's included in the bumper. Ah, because see, we have the bumper. We have the bumper at the end that states where my Patreon is and where Becky's Patreon is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. See, when we record, we don't we don't record with the bumpers. Those are put in in post. So <laughs> a little behind the scenes for you guys. Yay! Oh. So uh, once again, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine, signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.